Okay, so I've got my stair drawn in plan, and now I want to start projecting that in sections. So you can see here we've got two sections. We've got a long section and a cross section. Now, this section, uh, the cross section, is shown looking towards the doors. I'm going to draw it a little bit differently and show it looking towards the stairs. Right, because uh, it'll help with the working out. Also, it means that we don't need to draw all of this detail. It's not really necessary. I don't think, uh, is anyone keeping those doors? Maybe the upper level doors could be interesting to keep those. Oh, you have to keep them, do you? Oh. Are they? I mean, I know that in, in reality they might be listed, but for your design assignment, I don't think it's required that you keep them. Or is it? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's always been something that people have changed. So, okay, so if you have to keep them, then maybe uh, that's what you've got to do. But uh, yeah, I know with the previous design projects, people always have made changes to the entry. And um, it's, well, I think an important thing for designing a, a residence there that you think about the entry. Um, so, again, looking at the other section though, we can see the stairs shown over on the left. But uh, again, I'm going to show them in this section uh, instead of those doors. And again, it will make it easier for your assignment uh, if you have to draw all of that detail. Uh, for this section, it's going to be uh, probably harder. Exactly, that's right. So you'll need, yeah, so that's right. You won't have to show the parapet in your cross section, but you'll still need to have something in the in the other section. You're not really going to show anywhere near the amount of detail. Just the top of the parapet's all you need there. So that should make it a bit easier, and uh, it's also going to help with the working out. So by drawing the stairs here in section, we're going a long way to working out. Uh, the uh, different uh, properties of the stair. So, to draw that section, I want to draw looking towards this stair. So what I'm going to do is, using the view cube controls in the top right, I'm going to click on the curving arrows there to rotate the view. So I've clicked on the arrow pointing down, curving arrow pointing down, and you can see it's just rotated that floor plan. That's a really useful tool for projecting off any drawing, really. Yes, sure, sure. So I'll rotate it back, so the curving arrow here is pointing up and to the left. So make sure you don't click on the view cube itself, it's next to that. And you won't even see those buttons until you hover near the view cube, and then you'll see all the different buttons come up. And again, we've got these curving arrows. So again, clicking on the one pointing down to the right, you can see it's rotated that view. So then I'll go to look at the stair more closely. And here you can see the advantage of the, the way I set up the layers, or the way I've shown you to set up the layers. Uh, and basically I can use the same layers for the section. Lots of people make all these extra layers for their sections because they maybe don't think about what they're really doing and the way they can use line weights. So here I've got a layer for the wall, AX wall, which of course is the layer we've used for the walls in the plan, which is cut. Now I've made it 0.25. Uh, now that I've realised we're going to be doing 1 to 50, I'll make that a bit heavier, just so that you can see it. But also it's a good tip when you make uh, scales like this, you can make the line weights a bit heavier. So if I make it 0.3, now you can see those walls a bit more clearly are showing cut on the plan. And I'm going to then draw a line on the same layer from the corner of my wall and then just take it straight up with auto turned on. So you're on the wall layer? Yep, on the wall layer. Yep, the same layer I used for the plan. And I'm just taking it up fairly arbitrary distance, just so that it's probably about the length of the building. We're going to trim it and uh, do some other things with it in a moment, but that's all I need for now. And then maybe just to keep it simple, I'll draw some more lines from each corner of the wall. So I'll draw another line from the opposite corner, and again just take it straight up. 
and then another line from the inside of the wall. So the inside corner there, and then again taking it straight up. And then from the inside corner on the right, and again straight up. So can you see how in section, we've already worked out the two walls that will be either side of the building. So I've got these two walls set out. Or the widths are set out anyway. We'll look at the heights in a moment. So that's the first step. And that's a standard method used to project off floor plans. Thinking about the things that are cut through first. So then looking at my layers, you can see I've got layers for my walls, but I don't have any layers for floors. So looking at the section, we've got floors that are being cut through there. So I need layers for those. And we're going to have two different materials, so we'll need a few different layers for the different materials as well. So going into layers, so I'm going to make a new layer called A, oops, A, X, floor, concrete, or just conk, it's good enough. Yep, conk, so for concrete. And uh, so that's going to be our floor slab layer. I oh, know, but we're going to pretend there is. Yeah. So we're just going to draw what's what's on this drawing. I know at the moment it's just dirt, but yeah, draw what's there uh, in the drawing. So the colour, because it's concrete, I'll make green. Green is the standard colour, so have a look at the Australian standard that I showed you before, and you'll see green is the colour for concrete. Yep, they're just things you'll yep, need to look up until you remember them. So, yep, in that Australian standard, it lists all those standard colours for materials. What line huh? I'm going to leave that point, mark that, I'll make that point three. And then I'll make another layer. A X floor timber or wood if you want to. Everyone seems to be using wood these days. It used to always be timber. Now these are both cut layers, so remember that way that convention I tend to follow. If it's not specified, they're for cut, not projection. And so timber or wood, again, yellow, any yellow tone you like. And again, it's a cut layer, so I'm going to make that point three. Right, so... That's all I need for now. I'll set the concrete floor layer current. And then I'll just start you off on the projection, uh, the floors and the stair, and then you can go from there. So I'm on my concrete floor layer. And I'm going to draw a line, again, this time, just maybe from anywhere I've on the left, I'm not going to be too precise here. So to the left of those walls, it's going to draw a line and take it straight across. So again, you need auto to be on here. Get a straight line. And that's going to establish my floor position, the top of my floor. So adjust it if it's not far enough from the floor plan. So looking again at this drawing, so you can see then, so it's this line here that I've just set out. And then we need to decide on a floor thickness. Now, we haven't really looked at this uh, in much detail in construction. I know we've touched on it, but the, the thickness of a slab is, uh, 
it's usually fairly standard for slabs on the ground. Do you have any idea what thickness they might be? Yeah, that's actually a thick one. They're normally even thinner than that. 120 <coughs> is usually enough. But can anyone tell visually, looking at that drawing, how thick do you think that one is? Yeah, I'd say it's at least 200, yeah. So, yeah, 250 is probably not far off, but I'll say about 200. And you can tell by looking at things like the walls. The walls we know are about 450. So it looks like it's at least half the thickness of the wall. Probably is 250, but I'm going to make it 200 because <coughs> 200 is very thick for a slab like this. So I can offset now. 200. Whoops. From that line, just come down. <coughs> and then going back to the drawing. Something's really interesting here that I'm not sure about. They've got this uh, slab thickening at the edge, but then it's got an ag drain in there, an agricultural drain. I don't understand that. If you're going to have an ag drain, that'd be gravel, not concrete. There's no point putting an agricultural drain into concrete. Concrete's waterproof, pretty much. So I don't understand that detail. And I'm going to say we can ignore that and just take the slab across. That's how you would do it. If it's a slab inside existing walls, you don't need the slab thickening at the edge. The slab thickening at the edge is to support walls. So the typical way, and I've done lots of slabs like this, when you have a slab added to an existing building, normally it's just straight across. So that makes it easier. So with trim, so I've just clicked on the trim tool. I'm going to choose the inside of both of these walls. Press enter, and then just cut off all of those outside lines. So I've got the slab sitting nicely inside the wall. Is there any size of it you can 200. Okay, so then we've got this sandstone footing, which is hopefully going to all, all be covered up by the slab. So, okay, so because I've made it 200, now I can offset again, let's say 50, that's a good measurement, so we'll use 50 from the bottom of that slab and come down again. And then we can really just guesstimate the size of that footing. So if it's, if again the wall's about 450, then we can say that's probably about 600. Okay, so, okay, so the difference is 150, which means to keep it centered, that'd be 75 either side. So again with offset, so this time my distance for offset is 75. And I'll choose the two walls, or sorry, the two lines for the wall. So clicking to one side, and then choosing the wall again, clicking to the other side. So, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. This one. That's for the footing. Yeah, that's for the for the top of the footing. Okay. Yeah. So, <coughs> I'll just 50 mil. So that's 75. And so now, again, looking at this footing, again, just by eye, you can tell it's thicker than the slab. So a standard depth for a footing like this would be 300. So I'll offset again, 300, from the bottom of my new line for the footing. And then, this is when magic happens with fillet, I can just join all of those lines together to make a rectangle. And it's obviously much clearer when you've join the lines together. When you've got all those lines intersecting, it's hard to know what you're looking at, but if you keep tying it up as you draw, it should be much clearer. So then with trim, 
I can choose that line from the top of the footing, enter, and then trim those lines with the wall back finally. Yeah, yeah. The fillet? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so it's 75 either side of the wall. And then the d dimension from the bottom of the slab, it's 50 mil down. And then 300 from there. And then with fillet, you need to think about where you're picking the line. So the top, this line here, uh, for the top of the footing, I'm then going to join to the outside line on the left, and I'm choosing below, not above. So remember, you choose the part you want to keep. That's usually where fillet goes wrong. So again, fillet, and choosing the same line, but making sure I choose it above where it's going to join to this one. If I choose it down here, it'll hit the bottom. So I have to think about where they're going to join. It's going to join over here. So I'm going to choose above that point. And then again, this line over here. And then just keep repeating fillet. So this time, top of the footing to the line for the outside on the right. And then again, one more. Hit that line and one below. So with trim, again, I'll choose the top of the footing, enter, and then choose the two lines that I want to cut. And then to keep it tidy, I'll select all of those lines for my footing and make sure they're all on the floor concrete layer. So, oh, you can, you can, yeah, yeah, if you want to, yeah. This is So I'll copy that across. So with copy, you can use the outside line on the bottom of the wall as your base point, and then take it across perpendicular to the inside line on the opposite wall. You could use mirror as well, actually, but copy should do the same. And then trim, and I might just start stop after that, and I'll use some time. So I'll trim these lines back. Maybe I'll give some time to uh, look at that. Oh, no, so I'll just, we'll just, one more thing. Uh, the floor above, I'll just start the set out for that, just in case we've, we've got a lack on. So the um, floor to floor height is three metres. So if you've gotten to this point, you can then again offset 3,000 from the top of this floor. Click above. And then the floor thickness, we'll say, is, what do we say, 250? Yeah. So again, with offset, I'll make the distance 250. Mm, actually, no, sorry. Uh, we've got the floorboards there. That are, that are being shown. So you've probably been given the, flip, the finished floor height, not the, the floor level. Three metres. Three thousand. So the overall thickness there will make 270. And I'll put these dimen dimensions up in a minute, but uh, again, for now I'll just offset 270. Just to start on that set out and then I'll change those lines to the floor wood layer for now. So I'll finish it there. Um, but uh, again, I'll quickly draw the dimensions in. You don't have to draw the dimensions as yet, but I will so that you can see them on the screen. Just check all those things. So I'll make dimension style very quickly. Okay, so again, the floor to floor height, really important. I'll make that on a better layer. So let's set those out.
Okay, so that floor to floor height 3,000. The floor thickness at the bottom. Oops, I'll just do it on layer zero. So that was 200. The footing. The gap between the floor and the footing is just 50. Uh, what else do you need? The width of the footing. Oh, that's like the Uh, should be 600. I've done that extra 10 mil. What did I do wrong there? I think I made my... Oh, that's fine. I forgot my walls are 460. So I'll, uh, I'll fix that. Yours you shouldn't have that problem. Uh, any other dimensions? Oh, yeah. So the, uh, the thickness of this floor, 270. There we go. Any other dimensions that I've missed? Yep. Okay, so I'll finish it there. I'll come back and do the stair. Hopefully we'll just have time to do the stair before we finish.